In today's video, we have Ethelson V400, a Delta 3D printer sent to me by geekbuying.com, where you can buy this printer for 700 euros, so it lost quite a bit of price compared to when it was just released. As you can see, this printer is a little bit different to a normal or standard 3D printer that you most likely have in your mind when you think of one. Because this is a delta shaped 3D printer. What does it mean? It means that it has a heated printing bed that stays stable and it's not moving. And instead, it has three double carbon rods that moves the printing head in X, Y and Z directions simultaneously at the same time. Of course, for all of that to work, you need completely different printer control firmware. And this printer is running Clipper. Clipper is an open source firmware that is used by everyone that wants to achieve faster printing rates. If we oversimplify the benefits of Clipper, basically it's the firmware written in a way that allows better control of microcontrollers, stepper motors and so on, which of course allows your printer to print more accurately and faster. Wilson 400 also has the Clipper interface that you see here on the touchscreen and it works pretty well. But you also have the web interface. You can connect your printer to the Wi-Fi and then through Wi-Fi you can monitor your webcams, do time lapses and completely control your prints, stop, start them, pause and so on. <laughs> So when you look at the specs of the printer, it can print up to 400 millimeters per second. That doesn't mean it will print all the walls, external walls and so on at that speed, but it can reach those speeds of traveling and so on. Nevertheless, whatever the final number is, it's really fascinating to see this printer work because the movements of the print head are really, really fast. And by the way, the quality is still very, very good. Of course, the maximum speed at which you can print will depend on the materials you choose and on the speed. So an example right here, you see me trying to really push the printer very hard and then PLA just melting on top of each other, resulting in a bad printing quality. That was at 400 millimeters a second and so needing more temperature to melt the filament. Later, I reduced the temperature and the print quality returned back to normal. And by normal speed, I mean we average 125 millimeters a second during the complete print still, which is incredibly good result compared to any of my other 3D printers. In your slicer, when you set up the print speed, it will automatically change the wall speeds, outer walls, inner walls, top and bottom and so on. And of course, it's possible to play a lot with these parameters, also with the acceleration and so on. But in order to somehow simplify the speed difference, what I try to do is to look at the Creality Tender 3S1 Pro that says the maximum speed is 160 and Ethelson says movement speed up to 500 mm per second and printing speed 400 mm per second. In order to simplify it somehow, I just wanted to figure out for myself how much faster Ethelson is than my Ender 3 Pro. And to at least eliminate the material impact, I printed both from the same roll of PLA. You can see the head movement speed is dramatically different. I actually could have slowed down the FL Sun because the Benchy from FL Sun came out a little bit worse quality than the one from Ender 3 S1. Plus, adjusting the seam preferences and slowing it a tiny bit down to 30 minutes would produce much better result. Staying at around 300 millimeters per second produce satisfactory quality results with decent speeds and I'm super happy about how fast this printer works. On super soft TPU, I couldn't get more than 30 millimeters per second, so that's irrelevant. All right, I tried to print super soft TPU, but it's not gonna happen on these speeds, sure. But on a hard 95A TPU, I could actually print at 200 millimeters per second with a satisfactory result. And Peggy printed quite well at 300 millimeters per second as well, without any fine tunings, just using the general slicer profiles. These are some of the other prints that I have made.
In order to support those speeds, printer has double cooling fans from both sides of the hot end that can print up to 300 degrees Celsius, meaning you can print all the fancy materials like nylon and so on. There are also LED lights, which I personally don't like, at least for filming, because they have a certain light temperature that's not perfect for video, but it's pretty good for seeing your printed parts. The printer of course does auto leveling and since I did it one I never had to relevel my bed. I did all the prints with the same initial leveling not ever having any adhesion problems whatsoever. The filament goes through the filament sensor and straight into the direct drive extruder that's mounted on the print head itself making it easy to swap out filaments. Overall I was super happy with the printer's performance and if I had any failed prints this was only because of the user error, slicing something incorrectly, trying to print too fast, too flexible filament and so on. But there are of course some small downsides. This is almost the largest object you can place on this printer because of its being a delta. You see it can't, the printing head cannot travel any more further up. I could probably print 3-4 centimeters more, that's it. But look how much unutilized space is there compared to the size of the print and the size of the printer. From the table to the top of the printer is 93.5 centimeters and if you place some filament above it, it will be 1 meter 30. On the other hand, if we compare it to Ender 3 S1 Pro, it has still smaller build volume, so you wouldn't be able to print this box, neither in this width, neither in this height on Ender 3 S1 Pro. The second little downside for me is this filament holder, which is flimsy and looks like, you know, they put something the last minute very quickly before releasing the product. Of course, you can 3D print different one yourself. It's not a big deal, but just something I completely didn't like on this printer. And one more thing you will have to print yourself is the holder for this pad. I don't like how it's made. Uh, there are better ones and thingiverse which you can 3D print and hang the screen on your printer. All in all, it's quite an expensive printer that prints really fast with a reasonable quality. If that's something you're looking for, there are links in the description below where you can buy this printer with a discount code. I hope you enjoyed this quick review and I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers!